house of the Lord today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, to feel his presence and to know, hallelujah, that our God is still alive. Praise the Lord. It's good to, amen, just to be here. Let's join together right now and ask the Lord to help us in Jesus' name. Let's pray right now. Lord God, we magnify your holy name. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. God, you're mighty and strong. And Lord Jesus, we're just asking for your great touch here today. Lord God, we know that you're on the throne. Lord, you never moved. You never went anywhere, Lord. And God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever and, and everywhere, Lord. God, we know that. And Jesus, right now, we're asking you, Lord, God Almighty, that you would touch in this house today. God, that you would stir our hearts, Lord. Jesus, that you, God, would move in our souls. Lord, we've come to give you praise and hey, Lord. We've come to give you worship. Lord, on this beautiful day, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And let's worship the Lord in Jesus' name. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a
Hallelujah. Let's praise Him just a little bit more. Can we do that today? Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you, precious Lord. God, you're such a mighty God, a wonderful Savior, Lord. And Jesus, we're so grateful to be in your presence today. Dear God, dear God, dear God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, praise God. You may be seated. Uh, we're still learning lots of things. Like, how are we going to take an offering? And uh, let's see here. Who's got a mask? Brother Thomas, you got a mask? Did you put that on? Brother Chris, you got a mask? We need about two or three more. I, I think we, yeah. Um, whoever's not afraid has got a mask. Amen. Brother Brett, put your mask on. There are four offering plates back there in the back. If you'd go back there and grab those. A moment ago, I walked up through the, the aisle there. I didn't have a mask on. I was holding my breath. So I'm going to see how long I can hold my breath. A few times here. <laughs> of course, uh, there's still people who are watching online, and so we want to make them welcome. Let's give them a hand, uh, those who are not able to be here. Um, amen. So I'm going to have you come up front, fellas. Doesn't have to be a guy. can be a gal. Somebody wants to help with the offering. We're just doing the best we can, okay? And uh, Brother Thomas, you go get that other one, and I'll hold it for the last one, okay? So here's what Brother, Brother Chris has got. It. He's got his. Hold on, sister. Hold on. Hold on. We're not ready yet. Um, uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, Brother Chris is going to come stand right here. So... He looks like Lone Ranger now, I'm telling you. <laughs> Look out. So, and there are cameras. Of course, you know about the one in the back. There's one over here, and then there's one over on this side. So, uh, you can wave. Won't do you any good. They can't see you. But uh, uh, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and all that you've done. Worship is a very intense part of our giving, very passionate and in fact, some folks have just given uh, above and beyond. We're thankful for that. Uh, but here's what we will do. I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to play a little song here. I'm going to ask you to go row by row. And what that means, we're going to have the first. How about, how about we do this? We'll have the first, first row stand first, okay? First row. All right. You guys need to stand up. Quit being disobedient right there. Okay. All right, and we're just going to have you march around, and what we're going to ask you to do is to march to your right. March and come around and go like that, and then back through the other aisle. Okay, so let's try that. Let's pray first, okay? <laughs> Jesus, we love you today, and we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for your great grace. And, Lord, we're just asking for your help today. God, we pray, Lord, that you'd bless this offering, Lord, these gifts that we bring to you today. Lord, our tithes and our offerings, Lord. We pray, God, that you would provide, Lord, uh, employment, raises, and, uh, God, that you would give folks uh, uh, promotions, Lord, and, God, that you would rebuke the fowler, Lord, and, Jesus, that you would move, Lord, rebuke the canker worm and the caterpillar, Lord, and all of the things that uh, the devourer would like to destroy and take from us. Uh, Lord, we pray and we give this in faith today, believing, Jesus, that you are the way maker. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so first row, stand up. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your right, okay, and come to the closest pan to you and go back to your seat. It, it'll really go, go better. This second aisle, stand up. Second row, I'm sorry, I said second aisle. Second row, please stand up. And you'll just m march this way, and it looks like We've got people that are not going to, what are you saying? Why, if you don't have anything, you need to walk. Right. So if you don't have anything, if there's a health issue, though, I'll tell you what. Why don't, we're just going to make this easy. Brother Adams, just reach up there and put that in there. Brother Thomas, reach out with your hand. Hold it way out there. We're doing the best we can. Hold it way out. There you go. And... Um, that's the best I know how to do because we've got other issues we didn't even think about. Just mark, walk back through there, gentlemen. 
Just walk back through the aisles, and if people give, there you go. And guys, you just need to hold your breath, okay? All right, just keep on going to the back, and we're done. Hallelujah. Well, that was about as easy as a frying pan on Christmas Day. Upside the head. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. And uh, we want to pray. It's good to see Brother Potts here today. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Good to see him in the house of the Lord. And to all of you, praise God. It's just good to know he's alive. If you have a prayer request you'd like to make known just by the lifting of your hand today, it's good to see Brother and Sister Thomas. Amen. Brother Clyde, remember his lungs. And there's probably a bunch that we can't really can't hear. Pray for Sister Tammy, uh, for her body, that the Lord would just continue to touch her. Amen. And Brother Scott Goodlive, it's good to see him. He had a heart cath. Marcy. Marcy's better. Did the fever break? Hallelujah. That's a that's a prayer. That's an answered prayer. If you didn't hear about that, she had the coronavirus, Marcy Wilson, and uh, uh, it was she got woke up the next day after we prayed, and the fever had broken. That night after we prayed, the fever broke, and she started feeling better. Praise God. Amen. All right, praise God. He's a lot, he's a way maker. He's a healer. Amen. Well, let's join together right now. If you'd like to stand, we're just going to pray that God would move, continue to move. Praise the Lord. I, I'm glad I'm serving the Lord. Amen. I'm glad I know that I've got a healer in Jesus' name. Lord God, we call on you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, we're praying, Jesus, for your great strength, your great power. In the name of Jesus, we're asking for your help right now, God. We're asking for your, your glory, Lord, to be dispensed among us today. In the name of Jesus, uh, God, we give you great praise, great glory, and we ask for your touch, Lord, on Brother Potts, Sister Tammy today. God, Marcy Wilson. God, we're praying for Brother Clyde. His lungs, Lord, God, it should move. We're praying for Brother Scott, Lord, it should move in his heart, God. We're praying, Jesus, Almighty oh, God, for your for your wonderful touch, Lord. Jesus, we praise you today, God. We love you today, Lord. We worship you today, God. We thank you today, Lord. God is our delight and our privilege, Lord, to call on you. And Jesus, we just give you praise for that right now. In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we praise you today. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands one more time for the Lord right now. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. You may be, the worship team's coming back to, to lead us in more praise and worship today. Hallelujah. I give you glory for all you brought me through, and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do.
the name of Jesus. How many have hurt your toe and you can't help but dance around the living room? Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what happened when that big old uh, splinter from my 100-year-old floor went into my bottom of my foot. Jesus, 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 till I got to the couch. Um, how many have spoken that name when somebody has been gravely ill? And you knew that only through the name of Jesus was a miracle going to happen. How many have spoken that name or heard that name when you went down in the watery grave? The name of Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter how you use it, as long as it's in a good way, you can expect a 
breakthrough. You can expect something to happen when you call on that name. You can expect a breakthrough, a miracle, change to be broken, healing to happen. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's impossible to count and name the ways that this name can impact you. I'm so, so, so thankful that I have the name of Jesus applied to my life. I'm so thankful for that name of Jesus every day. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Now I don't think some of you believe it. I think some of you need to get used to being back in church. I know it's hard, it's adjustment. We all gotta get used to going back to work sooner or later. I'm ready today to come back into his presence. You may not even know and explain what that something is, but I know something happens when I call your name. 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 Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. Something happens when I call your name. We break through when I call your name. We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move, chains are loose, we break through. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move, chains are loose, we break through. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Mountains move. Chains are loose. We break through. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move. Chains are loose. Break through. Something happens when I call your name. Now 
Praise the Lord, everyone. You may be seated. Please prepare to enjoy a Memorial Day tribute, which is coming right now. Can I make an announcement? You can. <laughs> Do quick. whatever you want, Sister um, Henderson. Okay. We would like to let everyone know that we have two graduates this year. We have Jaden Razor, who graduated from high school Thursday yes. night. Yes! And Cameron Potts is graduating from college, and we're so proud of him. So, and of course, we can't do a party like we normally would do, but what we would like to do next Sunday, we will have cupcakes in a styrofoam container for everybody to take when they leave, and we will also have tables set up where you can put cards to each of the boys, and they, they'll have their mementos, their pictures, and that sort of thing up. So... We'll look forward to that next week. Thank <laughs> you. 
Amen. The Lord. Let's clap our hands to the Lord in honor of all of our servicemen, all of those that have served, all of those that we remember. Today. Amen. And what a great and mighty God we serve. My wife's trying to give me a message. Come here. She, I never have been able to get a mic in front of her before. She's helped me. Come on. Now she's helped him help me on the Wednesday night Bible study, and I can't get it out of her now. So I'm so glad. There you go. You talk. I got a message from Sister Kyla, and she is at work today, and she has got this up on Facebook Live. And she has all the residents watching. They are really enjoying the singing. And so we just want to say hello to all the residents at Sunrise. Amen to that. Yeah. 
Let's have all of our servicemen stand up, those that have served in the military. Would you please stand? We're so thankful for each and every one of you, thankful for your sacrifice. And uh, you might say, well, they're the ones that made it. Well, thank God they made it. We wanted every one of them to make it, didn't we? Amen. 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 Praise God. Brother Adams. We can't hear you. I just want to salute all those who, all our frogs, the hundreds, I've lost some in almost every war. I know other people have too, but I sure am proud of our country. And I'm going to start with you. Don't excuse me for the tears because I love my country. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. My daughter's freaking out right now. I pulled this off and put it back on. What? You didn't see that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to wave my flag again. Praise the Lord. We're going to get used to all of this. And um, God's going to help us. And... Um, there's still several that are online there watching us, and uh, some don't feel comfortable to come out, and I understand that. Uh, there will be a short service for the children after service uh, is, uh, is finished. So if you'd like to remain in your seats for the children, uh, they can be a part of that. I know that they will appreciate that. I, I want to say appreciate how hard Sister Caitlin and Brother Michael have worked uh, to try. And, you know, it's never perfect. It's not in person, but to try and to provide good material for our children to be connected uh, during this time and it's it's been so hard and so it's it's really a homecoming for us uh, we just want to say thank thank you for all of, of your support and I know that uh, uh, our government's finding out a lot more information a lot of data that they've been studying and I'm not sure that I really understand all of it but one thing I do understand is that Jesus has never changed. And uh, I feel like I've grown closer to him during this time. And uh, it is so good to not be just looking into a camera today. I want to look in the camera and say hi. But um, that's been our venue for the last, I think, 10 days. I think it's 68 days now. 69, but who's counting? And uh, good to see Debbie. Good to see Kylie praying for you a lot know that God has just been touching each of you and uh, little Astrid is she back there there she is and uh, oh she's growing oh my look how pretty she is today oh my goodness oh my goodness so praise the Lord I think we've covered everything we need to cover uh, if you mind taking your Bibles uh, brother Tanner would you grab a microphone I want you to help me today Come up here and pull that chair right there out here and sit. You're going to help me today, if you don't mind. I appreciate your obedience. But I'm so glad that we're here today. I want to I preach to you today about loving truth. Loving truth. How many of you know what truth is? What is truth? Okay, what is truth? Somebody else. There's a chair right there, buddy. If you grab that and pull that. What is truth? Pilate asked that question. Thy word is truth. Somebody said that. What else? Yeah, Brother Williams. Amen to that. So I'm so glad that we're here. I'm so glad I'm with all of you fortunate people. And I feel blessed that I'm counted worthy to be in his presence. Isn't that nice? And he looked nice today. You can take your mask off while you're there. Let him get a good look at you. Look at those shoes. Look like new shoes. Is that a new suit? New tie? New tie. New shirt? Ooh. How about your socks? No. Okay. 
Well, we're glad Brother Tanner's here. Hallelujah. But I, am, I do feel very blessed that I'm counted worthy to be in His presence. Can you say amen? We've all been born again and placed into the kingdom of God. I'm glad for that. I want you to know that we are a part of a chosen generation. If you'd get for me 1 Peter 2, 9. You need a Bible? You did everything but get your Bible. Careful, that's powerful. We are a royal, part of a royal priesthood. Did you know that? We are part of a holy nation. We have been given certain rights. We have been given certain responsibilities. We all have. We've been called to show forth the praises of I said the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. If you would read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, please. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Now why did I have him read that again? I wanted to see if you'd give him more of a response than you gave me. And I don't mean him, I mean God, because that's God's word. Read it again, please. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous yes, light. Lord, praise God. Oh, let's praise him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. You may be seated. I'd like you to know how many of you have been cooped up long enough. Are you tired of being treated like a chicken? Huh? That's what they do with chickens, isn't it? They put them in a coop. They corral them. Well, praise God, we have not been called to be chickens. We have been called to be the children of the living God. And we've got a right to praise Him, somebody. I said, we've got a right to praise Him. We've got a right to praise Him. We've got a right to praise Him. Come on, somebody. We are the children of God Almighty. We are the children of the King of Kings. We are God's offspring. And doesn't it feel good to be free? It feels so good to be free. Amen. So it feels so good to be in the house of the Lord Amen. Well, I better get to my message. Please turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 10. If you'd give me a little bit more out of this monitor here, Brother Scott, I would appreciate it. In the weeks to come, you'll notice that we've added the doors back uh, to the sanctuary back here. So for entry and exit on and off of the platform, take a look at that whenever you get time um, and uh, I'm not saying go back there today. You just, as we move forward, you can do that. Brother Tanner, please stand and read chapter 2 through verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen. Let's all stand and pray. This is our first service back. And I just want to say I am glad to be here. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you today. And God, we invoke, Lord, our power and privilege today. Lord, as the people of God, to call upon your name in this day, this hour. And to know, Lord Jesus you are our king. God, we pray for our nation right now. We pray for our president. We pray, Lord, and thank you, God, that for his vision. And just pray, Lord, for all of our leaders. God, for the right to come together and to praise you, Lord. Jesus, we pray right now, God, that you would touch every heart, every soul. Those that are gathered together in this room and, Lord, those that are abroad, and those that will view. I pray in Jesus' name right now. You would touch every life in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Proverbs 23, 23 says this, buy the truth and sell it not. And wisdom and instruction and understanding. 
You see, love for truth is something we receive according to God's word. Love, that is an intense feeling of deep affection. Truth, the way that some people would define it, is the standard of God's revelation. And that is much deeper than what real, any of us really understand. The day that Jesus stood before Pilate, the question of truth came up, and nobody could define its meaning. I want you to know that today, that truth is more than a definition. Truth is a person. If you please get for me John chapter number 14, verse number 6, Brother Tanner, I, I just want to say, Brother Williams, you, you spoke that verse, and I hope that I can convey this in the way that it needs conveyed today. As Last night, I was putting the finishing touches on this message. I was back here filling the baptistry and sitting on those steps, and me and God was having us a little talk, and it was, I don't know, almost 11 o'clock, and I just felt God begin to move in my soul and in my heart, amen, to define some things for me and to redefine some things. If you would please read that, please, 14 and 6 of John. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. You see, there's something about it. When Jesus said this here, a lot of people looked at it and they were still thinking in a definitive manner. They were still thinking of a definition, something that was of a mental sense, a sense something that was knowledge or information. But I, I want you to know today that truth is more than knowledge. It is more than information. Praise God. It is a person. John 10 and 7 says this. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Amen. So truth is also a door. You may be seated. Truth is a relationship with the master. You see, Pilate had to question what truth was because he did not know Jesus. In John chapter 14, verses 8 and 9, I want you to consider what Jesus said to Thomas as Brother, Tom, Brother Tanner be, prepares to read here. You see, Jesus had some words that were, that were so uh, reaching, far-reaching into his soul that I don't think he understood even after what he had said to them. Please read. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? And so Philip comes along and he wants to say, who, who is this? Who are you? What, what is this? Who is the Father? And Jesus moved on, started talking to him. Amen. There are too many people that are trying to educate themselves to a knowledge of God today. And I appreciate every institution of higher learning. I, I myself attended uh, Jackson College of Ministries back in the day when it was the place to go. Uh, but uh, more than anything, I think that they tried to fill our minds with, with knowledge and exegesis of the Word of God. And I believe that we need to understand the Word of God. But there is something that is so much more than just a head knowledge. Praise God. There's much more than that. You see, there is something that God wants from us. Uh, all God really wants for His people to do is to connect with Him. Hello, somebody. To plug in. To fall head over heels in love with him. But people keep trying to impress him. God, look at how pretty I am. Some of you laughing. You like my haircut? I just got this about 12 weeks ago. I've been working on this myself. Anybody want a haircut? Look at how smart I am, some people say. Look at all the degrees that I have. Look at all the information that I have that I can spit out at a, at a moment's notice. Look at how strong I am. Come on, everybody flex. Careful, don't break that. Look at how... Look at how many awards I have. Look at how many bowling trophies I have. How many trophies I've accumulated. How, Brother Tanner, how many trophies do you have? Sister Cindy, y'all don't even know. There's too many. 
Look at my house. Look at my car. God, look at what all I've done. Here's what I want you to know today, that Jesus is already impressed with you. A wave needs to go across this place. He is already impressed with you. Do you know that he made you in his image? Do you know that you are a child of God? Do you know that you are the reason that Jesus went to Calvary and died? You. Brother Mark, that being that you got your arm around right there. Sister Linda, Jesus went and died for you. You talk about head over heels in love with somebody. But yet we spend our time, so much of the time, trying to impress. You see, Jesus is already head over heels in love with us. Amen. He really he is. Hallelujah. The devil would not like it, amen, for us to sit back and to, uh, he would like for us to sit back and just kind of accept things as they go. But I want you to know something, that Jesus Christ is absolutely in love with you. Do you know what Jesus is really looking for? Jesus is looking for someone that can do something that he can't do. Oh, my. Now, now there was somebody, something just went across the place right now. Because there is something that God can't do. Something that God was looking for through all of the ages. You know what that was? Somebody to love him. Somebody else to love him. Now, he made an angel, and he made it to praise him and to worship him. That, there was no choice in that. Hang with me just for a moment here, okay? Had no choice what they were going to do. Praise God. They had to. And if they fell, you know what? They, well, they are bound for a thing called a lake of fire now, a thing called hell. That's where the devil is going on. Now, here's the deal. I love the church, but I can't love the church like God loves the church. I love my family, but you know what? God loves my family more than I love my family. God loves your family more than you love your family. Did you know that? The only thing that I can do that God can't do is love Him. Oh, I don't know if it's sinking in yet. Do you understand that there is something about you that God wants, God adores, God loves, God needs more than anything, and that is why you are here, and that is to love Him and to give Him praise. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Hallelujah. I'm here to magnify Him. God, I am here to give you something that the world can't give. I'm here to give you something. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. I, I, I don't know if that blows your mind or not, but to think that when I love God, when I praise God, when you praise God, amen, that is what the Lord made all of this stuff for. Go back and read creation. Go back and study all the things that you need to study and look at life through a different lens because I'm telling you, this God that we serve, amen, loves us and He wants something from us and that is love. To be absolutely crazy for Him. Praise God. Can you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you ever read in your Bible where the Bible says that God danced for himself? You'll not find it in the Bible. But what you will find where you'll read in the book of, of Samuel, you'll find that the Bible says that David danced before the Lord with all of his might. No wonder the scripture says later on that God looked at David and said, yeah, he's a man after mine own heart. Why? Because David understood something, praise the Lord. He understood that he could give God something, amen, that God couldn't give himself. 
He gave him praise. He gave him worship. He stepped out of who he was in his priestly office. And he said, God, I got something here. Amen. That I know that you need and I'm ready to fulfill that need. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder what it does to the heart of God. I wonder what happens to the Lord when, when could it be like when you see that first child for the very first time. When that delight comes in your mind. When, remember when you held your, your beloved hand for the very first time is that what it feels like when we begin to magnify and praise God I don't know but it could it be that we're trying to impress with all of the wrong things even with all the stuff that we can build and buy and give how much of that does God really I know that there is something amen in our souls hallelujah that 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 we want to give, we want to do, but we've got to do it within, in our hearts and in our minds to say that, Lord, I'm doing this with honor and reverence and love unto you. That's why the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Praise God. Praise God. All He really wants is a thing that makes us like Him. That's all He wants. To execute the will that he has given us to make a conscious decision to praise him all on our own. If I ask you to clap your hands, it, it's, it, it really can't be just your will only. Hello, somebody. But if somebody just all of a sudden out of the bubbling of their heart burst in to applause to say, God, you are mighty. Then God looks at it and says, you know what? That's not a robot. That's not an angel. I hear something. You see, that's why the Bible says that the Lord's ear is attuned, hallelujah, to hear the voice of his people, to hear the noise of his people, praising God, magnifying God. God's eye, the Bible says, roams to and fro throughout the earth. Why? God is looking for somebody that's dancing before the Lord, not because that there's a beat or a rhythm going on, but because there's something on the inside that says, you know what? I got to praise him. I got to praise the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. There is something about it. When his people, when his creation all of a sudden begins to magnify and praise him, there is nothing that delights my heart as a father anymore than when my daughter comes up to me and puts her arms around me. It'll make me melt, make you melt like nothing in this whole world when your children, no matter how old they are, when they come up to you and they wrap their arms around you and whisper in your ear, I love you. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like when your beloved, your husband, your wife comes up and wraps her arms around you and says, I love you. There's nothing like a child comes running to you with a squeal of delight, a smile on their face, and they'll jump into your arms. Oh, how God must feel. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho. Without any direction from anyone else, without a script, without a bulletin, without, without any kind of rules and regulation. This is how you got you to step exactly this far. You got to do it like that. No, friend. God says that he likes things unorchestrated. God says that he likes things. You know, when you look in your Bible and you read back in the Old Testament, God didn't want altars that, that it had the hammer or the chisel put to them. He wasn't interested in a masterpiece by Michelangelo, but God is interested in a masterpiece by his children. Hallelujah. That somebody that us go out and find, that rock won't do, this rock won't do, that rock won't do. Oh, but here's the one. There's the one that I found, the one that God made. And you'll set that up and you'll start pouring oil and water wine on that and you'll start praising God and you'll offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. There's something about it. There's something about it. If he has to tell us or make us worship him, then it's not really praise and it's really not worship. 
But if adoration just overcomes you and you start to sing about the Lord, then that's worship. If something comes over you and you start to dance before the Lord on your own, now I'm telling you that's praise and that's worship. That, my friend, is truth. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ with truth. Pilate had a chance to praise him, but he missed it. Please get for me Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 10 because there's something I want you to understand here. We have been living through a time of fear. We've been wondering, am I going to get the virus? Are all these things going to come against me? Am I going to end up on a ventilator? Is all these bad things going to come? And people have lived in fear, but I want to tell you something. We talked about fear, and the fear, God does not want us to have fear. He's not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us some things. Read on here, because I want you to understand something here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the, the knowledge go ahead. of the holy is understanding. Now listen. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. It's the what? The beginning of wisdom. The what? Beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. Here's the deal. When you first start understanding anything about God, you may be seated. there's a fear. There's a holy respect, but sometimes people don't move on from fear of God. And that's not what we're supposed to do. Fear will kill us. Fear will destroy us. But fear is the starting place. Fear will cause us to end up in that chicken coop like I was talking to you about. Fear will, will steal, kill, and to destroy. But fear is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. So what happens? Well, it's like any dating relationship that goes past a look. Guys, how many of you are afraid to go up and talk to that gal the first time? Was there a little bit of nervousness in your voice? Was there a little bit of wonder? Will she just look at me and dismiss me? Will she ignore me? And then you go and talk to her, and she's all giggly. <laughs> she laughed at your corny jokes. See, it all it started from a position of fear. You see, with the Lord, we start, and sometimes there are a lot of people, I came to the Lord because I, I, I heard about hell. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to hell. I had been told Jesus loved me, but I didn't really know what that meant. Somebody told me about hell, and I said, I don't want that. I want the other. And so it was a beginning place. It was a starting place for me to begin to understand who this God was. But you see something? I started having relationship with him. I started praying. I started calling on his name. I started coming to church. I started feeling the glory of God. Listen to I repented of my sins. I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sin. I turned my back on sin. And I stepped into the things of God. Come on, somebody, help me out right now. And as I began to move through relationship, amen, God came in my soul and filled me with the Holy Ghost, gave me something that the world can't give and something the world can't take away. That's what Jesus did for me. And listen, I've been living, with the, living for him now for 45 years. And you know what? It just gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Why? Because I've got a relationship with the Lord. And what started as fear has now come to a point where I don't feel fear God. I love God with everything in me. I give him everything because he is my everything. Hallelujah. I understand a little more now why David stepped out in front and he said, All right, boys, I know you got the Ark of the Covenant there and we're ready to take it to Jerusalem, but you just hang on because I'm about ready to bring this party, amen, to a roar, to a boil. And he stepped out and he started dancing before the Lord with all of his might. He started praising God. And let me tell you something there was nothing written, amen in the king's orders there was nothing written in the kingly uh all their oracles that they kept nothing written there nothing in the word of god that said that the king should dance before the lord 
David stepped up and he said, all right. And I don't think there was a lot of pride in him. But he, he stepped back and he said, all right, fellas, y'all are just going to have to watch. Because the king is getting ready to show you how it's done. I don't know if he took his shoes off. I don't know what, what happened, but here's what I do know. Amen. He started dancing before the Lord, and every six steps, the Bible says six, seven steps, they took and they sacrificed. They kept going. They made that procession all the way into the city. And let me tell you something. There was another one that there, was there that didn't know the Lord like David knew the Lord. It was my cow. It was Saul's daughter, and she was up in the tower, and she was watching, and she said, you know what? This is disgusting. This is dishonoring to the, to the very office of the king. But when David finally got there, she came up, and she said, oh, how wonderful and magnificent the king was today. You showed yourself in front of all of, all of the, the young ladies, the young maidens. And David looked at her and said, you got a wrong spirit. Basically, he said, you don't know God because you're not willing to praise him. You don't have a relationship with God. And you know what? It cost her. She remained until the day that she died. God shut off her womb. God shut off everything. Why? Because she did not have a relationship with him. Now, back to what truth is. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. You see, fear melts into love as one draws nearer to God. Why? Because it becomes a relationship, a partnership, a friendship. If you're still trying to impress God with your knowledge, please stop. He's not impressed. He already knows everything. He's already got it all in order. He is, but I want to just say, he might not be impressed with your knowledge, but he's still impressed with you. So I wonder today, is there anybody here that wants to know Jesus? What is truth, Pilate? If Pilate could have heard this message, if he could look back now, because the Bible says that, that Pilate, in his end days, he literally went crazy. He called for water that day to wash his hands. Why? Because there was somebody there that he would not take the time to get to know. I'm just going to process you, Jesus, like I've processed every other criminal that's come before me. I'm going to treat you like, listen, Jesus, I'm going to treat you like my job. Jesus, I'm going to treat you like my car. And there are some people that are very good at their job. Some people aren't so good at their job. Some people just literally don't care about their job. Some people take care of their car. You take pretty good care of your car? Have you waxed it within the last 10 years? I haven't. Well, maybe 10 years. How many washed your car lately? You've been too busy. Uh -oh. I'm seeing that. Okay, so the car don't mean that much to you. But you know what? If we cheat, if you treat Jesus like your car, do you think he's got a problem with that? If you treat G How many of you got repairs you need to make on your house? <laughs> it's okay. Raise that hand. It's okay. Chad Carroll. Yes, Chad Carroll treats his, his vehicle very good. I drove by your house one day, came by, and you had tore your fence out. Is it back? Oh, did you hear her? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not just, yeah. Oh, yeah. We went by, and, and, and they had some, I think, a little rust going on on some of it. And, and there they were, and. A little, took Helen a little bit of time to come out of the house because she had gone inside to clean up. And then here, here she comes outside, and 
I look out there and I, what happened to your fence? Well, you know, it needed to. And Grant, Grant helped. You see, when you like something, you get other people to help you out. You know, there's something about living for God. You just can't keep it to yourself. You got to tell somebody else. You got to let somebody else know about this Jesus. I'm looking back at our sister Cindy right now. I wish we had the camera that we could put on her and, and little Rhett right now because he's out back there having himself a little jig, but there's Grandma back there taking care of him. I wonder what would happen if people treated Jesus like their most precious. <laughs> I'm not talking about a drudgery. You mean I got to go to church again? Somebody says a bunch of backsliders hadn't been to church in two months. <laughs> I laughed about that. I thought that was hilarious. Someone piped up and said, yeah, but I sell my tithe. <laughs> you know what? When you can't, you find a way. Some of you have been praying, praise God. Some of you have been wanting. Some of you have been longing. Some of you have been thinking about some things that you've been through. Some of you have been thinking about how you were living before and how you're living now. Some of you have come up with new resolutions, new resolve that says, you know what? I'm never going to go back to the way that it was. I don't ever want to go back. I want to praise Jesus. I want to love truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. I said buy it. Whatever you got to do. Like that guy that was walking through a field, stumbled across something and found a treasure. He thought, you know what? I, I got to have this. So he went and he sold everything that he had. He came back just so he could buy that field. Why? Because he wanted the treasure. I'm telling you, there might be a little bit of dirt that you got to buy and go through, amen, to get your real treasure. And in this whole world, there's always going to be a little bit of dirt to dig through to get to your treasure. But I'm telling you, if you'll fall in love with Jesus, it'll be worth all the dirt. If you can see the real value and the prize that Jesus brings to the table I'll let you know today amen that you will do anything you got to do to live for him oh praise God praise God I hope you understand today that truth is not just what's in your mind but truth is the one you're having a relationship with called Jesus Christ he is the way he is the truth he's more than just the truth he is truth I said, He is truth. When you, when you raise your hands and love Him, hallelujah, there's something about it. Something about it. Jesus, I love you. I love you. As I come to a close today, the greatest day in my life wasn't 45 years ago when I came and gave my heart to the Lord. The greatest day in my life is right now. I said it's right now. Why is that? I love him more today than I've ever loved him before in my life. I love him more now, Brother Potts. After what we've lived through, what we have been through, people telling us what we can do. And when we can do it, and when we can't do it. But I'm going to praise my God no matter what happens. I'm going to praise my God no matter what happens. Anybody with me today? I know we, we can all pull out our photo albums. I was talking about photo albums in a Bible study not too long ago. We can pull those back and we can look at our pictures and we can say, oh, remember that? We keep records here at the church of when people get baptized, when they get the Holy Ghost. We can pull that book back and we can look at it. We can look at our attendance records. We can see who's, who was here when. No wonder Paul said it this way. Forgetting those things which are behind. 
pressing forward to those things which are before. Reaching forth, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is that? To be called the friend of God. Can you just reach out to the master right now? He's here. He is here. I don't want to tell you to raise your hand because I don't want you to, I don't want to steal your joy, your victory. I don't want to ask you to stand because I don't want to steal the blessing that God might have in store for you right now. All I'm going to say is what is God telling you today? How is God leading your heart? What is the emotion that's down deep in your soul? That's crying to get out. Have you ever had a time when a special feeling would come upon you? and You would feel like tears were about ready to well out in your face. And you fought that with everything that you could. I wonder today, is there somebody... Forget the dam. Don't hold them back. Lord, here they are. God, here I am. I don't know you yet like I want to. I want to know you more. Oh, Jesus. However you feel to worship him right now, would you do that as the singer sing? Oh, Jesus. what you are to me, Jesus. You're my healer, Lord. You're my way maker, Lord. No matter what comes against me. You're my truth, Lord. Is this how you feel about that the Lord? Is who you are. How do you feel about Him today? That is who how do you feel? Are. What's in your heart right that now? Is who you are. Jesus, I want to know you in the fellowship you of your suffering. I want to know you, Lord, in the power of your resurrection. I want to know you, Lord, you on the cross. I want to know you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the empty tomb, I want to know you. I want to know you, Lord. In the stable, I want to know you, Lord. You never stop, Lord. You never stop, You never stop, Lord. God, we praise you today. I worship you, Lord. I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, you never stop Let's call on him, church. Let's magnify him. Come on, somebody. Does anybody feel like lifting up your voice? Does anybody feel like lifting a hand? Does anybody feel like dancing before the Lord? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise. Celebrate you, Lord. 
We celebrate you, Jesus. You're worth everything I've got, Lord. You're worth everything I'll ever have, Lord. Miracle work and promise keeper, light in the darkness. Oh, my God, that Jesus, is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, let's worship with the singers for a little bit. Miracle work and promise He can't give himself, give him praise, give him worship, hallelujah. Praise him one more time. Can we do that? Jesus, we love you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. God, we magnify you. Lord, I deepen my relationship with you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to thank everyone that's joined us here today. If you've been online, God has touched your heart, and there's maybe he's done something in your soul. I want you to know that you can call the church. Just leave a comment right there in Facebook. Somebody will contact you. If you'd like to be baptized, we've got water. Here, we can baptize you in the name of Jesus today. Amen. There's chlorine. I hear chlorine kills Corona. Hallelujah. And so we say goodbye to our Facebook crowd. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Yeah, let's give them a hand. going to transition here to the children's service in just a moment, but we need to be careful. Uh, believe it or not, people are watching uh, our city government. They're just waiting for, some, for somebody as a result of a church service to get coronavirus and all of us get sick and die. That's what they're waiting for. And that would be their greatest trophy so they could say, I told you so. No, that ain't going to happen. God's in control. So here's what we'll do. Um, the restrooms will still be open, but if you would please uh, not congregate. I think once you get outside, coronavirus don't like sunshine either. <laughs> but if you have health issues, underlying health issues, we'll dismiss you first of all right now. You may you may go ahead and go, but uh, um, the rest of you, uh, I'd like to dismiss you by, by rows, by section. So if you wouldn't mind being seated. 
This is just what we have to do. So I don't know. Is, are there any deputy marshals out there that's, are there any? Okay. So what's the best way to dismiss from this place? Everybody's got your mask. That's the quickest door out. If you want, or that one, if you want to make your way. God bless you. We're so glad you come. Brother and Sister Thomas, loved you so much. So glad that God has kept you. Um, but we'll go ahead and dismiss the outside rows. Or yeah, outside sections first. If you want to wait outside, that's fine. You can wait out there, but please have your mask on. If you'd like to go ahead and go, if you're going to stay. Okay, for the children's service. All right, we'll come into the second rows in. If you want to go out the back, you can, whichever way you want to go. Maybe y'all are going to stay for the children's service. I don't know. I am. I know this is all weird and different for us. But somebody hit that light back there by the door. That other switch. Yeah, there's another switch right there. Sister Debbie, just turn it out. Thank you so much. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We'll probably I don't know how long you need, Sister Caitlin. Probably give us ten five, ten minutes. Praise the Lord.